God is good. Amen. Amen. Billy, did you have any idea what I was going to preach on this morning? It's amazing how God just speaks. It's just an honor and a privilege to be here this morning. You know, being on staff now for several months, uh, it's been a, a, a great experience to get to know people on a personal level, even in our church, but just seeing the faithfulness of God in our lives. And you know, I, I don't want to, last Sunday night, when I was standing up here praying, uh, you know, we were having a, a, a worship service at the end of, of, of the service, and I, I couldn't help but just thinking as I was standing over here praying, I could just see God just... He was just ministering to me in a way, and I had, you know, students laying hands on my back praying with me, and I, I could just, in my spirit, I just said, you know, God, I'm going to drive a stake in the ground, and I'm going to claim this ground as holy, because this is where you are. And, you know, we, we, we say there's no significance, but I believe there's significance in the fact that God is in the, in the house. God is here, because, amen, we brought him with us. And just when we stand on holy ground as Moses stood on holy ground, I believe that God is up to something. And you know, if you're here this morning and you're like, I don't even know why I came to church. Maybe I had a lot going on. I really didn't feel like coming. Let me tell you, the devil will do anything he can to deter us. Amen. So I just encourage you this morning as we get into even to, into our service, sermon today to just hear what God is saying in speaking to you. Amen. Uh, uh, what a privilege it is to serve here. My name is, if some of you that are new, my name is Pastor Trevor. Uh, I've been serving here uh, for six months at the church, but, but previous to that, I served for almost 10 years as the youth leader and then be getting my credentials and became a youth pastor. So if I mess up, I'm not as, if I make a few mistakes, it's because I'm not quite there, okay? I hope I never get there. I hope I'm always striving to be better uh, at being a pastor. Uh, I have a great teacher and mentor in Pastor Jeff and Sister Bonnie and Steve uh, and Melinda. What great people to work with. Oh, I mean, it's just amazing. I love working with Steve. I love it. I mean, he's just a great guy. Uh, and you know, but I, most and first and foremost is because I know they love Jesus. Amen. So I'm going to pray over our server, sermon before we get started. If you would just uh, bow your heads as we pray over, uh, over our, our sermon today. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for another day. Lord, I came in here this morning, Lord, just a man, Father, but God, you came in here as our Savior, our Lord, our leader. The Holy Spirit is our guide. God, today I pray that this sermon, Lord, goes forth, Lord. I hope the words just minister to many that are here. God, if there's someone here, Lord, as Billy was mentioning, Lord, that needs to extend a hand of forgiveness, Lord, I pray right now, God, that you minister into that heart, Lord, because we know, Father, that the enemy will do anything he can to destroy, Lord. And Father, right now, I claim victory over that situation, Lord. Father, we just pray that the words that we hear penetrate our hearing in our listening. Lord, it penetrates our hearts, even into the places, Lord, that nothing else can reach, Lord, but your word will reach there. Lord, I pray an anointing. Lord, let me be your voice because God in myself, I am nothing but a mortal man. Lord, but in you, I am everything that you need me to be, Lord. And Father, today, I pray just a special, sweet anointing just to come, even right now. Holy Spirit, just start to penetrate and minister into the hearts of the ones that are here. Lord, that is uh, you working. Lord, it is nothing that man is doing, but it's all you. God, we just give you glory and we give you praise. It's in Jesus' matchless name. And everyone said, amen. Amen. If when you came in this morning, you probably couldn't help but notice, especially Dwight and some of the taller guys. I had posted, I had put, hung some posters or banners up uh, last, last night, Josh, and I thank you, Josh, wherever you are, for helping me put those up. But those banners are hanging down fairly low, and they represented what we saw at camp. They were Marvel, and if you know anything about Marvel, that's like a comic book group of superheroes, right? So this morning, entertain me for a few minutes. How many of you know it's okay to have fun in church? Who likes to have fun in church? One, two, three. Okay, three people. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. Everybody, we're going to have a little fun, okay, this morning. Uh, before we get started, then we'll go through that. I have elected a couple folks. If you guys would go ahead and come up, Mitchell, uh, Leo, and Fernando. 
Now, what they're going to do is they have to pick someone out of the group, out of the crowd, and they're going to create a superhero. Uh, I told them to, to, they're going to create them with these colors. They're going to give me their superhero name, their strength, and their weakness. So I gave them some of the kids at camp saw this. So while they're doing that, I'm going to give you three minutes, okay? You already have someone picked out? All right, his mom. That's cool. You get to decorate your mom as a superhero. You don't have to do anything then, right? She's already your superhero. All right, I'll give you, you guys can go ahead and start. Try not to make a ruckus. Don't make a mess because we'll be in trouble. Angie's here watching, okay? So clean up after yourselves. All right, you guys can start. If you would turn with me, and, and, and I'll say this, how many of you have ever seen the symbol with the, I don't even know what you call it, excuse my ignorance, but it's like the, the plus or negative sign uh, when you're doing math, right? It's like minus, the minus sign, I think you would call it. Uh, it's a way of saying less than, is that it? Less than, and has the number three. How many of you know what that stands for if you're texting? All right, everybody that's younger, raise, see, yeah, they know. Raise your hand, I, you guys know. What's it mean? If you send that Joss to Victoria, what's it mean? It means love, right? That's what it means. So it took me a while. The kids showed me. Sorry if you didn't know what it meant. It took me a while to figure it out, but I was on Facebook, and I was like typing one night to someone I was talking to several years ago, and they typed a heart, and I was like, how did you do that? And it's so cool. They're like, well, you just put this symbol in and a three and it comes up. And I was like, that is so cool. And then I learned that three little marks up in the air and it forms like a, like a shark. I was like, this is awesome. And then little smiley faces. So I was like getting educated in a matter of minutes. And of course the kid was probably 11 or 12. So go figure, right? But it's just amazing. Like if my wife sends that to me, I know what it means, right? It, it means love. So if you would, let's, if you would, you can stand with me. I hate to make you stand, but we'll stand one more time for the reading of, of God's scripture, God's word. It's in Ephesians, Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. And Dwight and I put this on PowerPoint so you could follow along up here if you don't have your Bible. Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. It says, for this reason, I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever, amen. You may be seated. God is awesome, amen. When I said God is awesome this week, all the kids would say, hey, everything is awesome. So if I say, if God is awesome, you have to do that. Okay, that's what we did at, at kids camp. The, the title of my message was Love Draws. Bonnie came up in my office on Wednesday and she said, I need a title to your sermon. We're creating your PowerPoint, I need that. So I was sitting there when I was rambling on, she said, it sounds to me like you're saying Love Draws. I said, sounds great, sounds great. So that's what we titled it. Thank you, by the way, Bonnie, for helping me out with that. Four superheroes, uh, three superheroes, excuse me, are going to be uh, coming up here in a minute. But when I was little, I loved Superman, the pictures, there they are, Aquaman, Green Lantern, and The Flash. Those were my favorite. Uh, I thought it was cool that Superman could fly, and Aquaman could telepathically communicate with whales and sea creatures, and that the Green Lantern had this ring that had powers to move things. And I loved The Flash because he was really fast. I wish I could always be like him. I always thought that was really cool. As Christians, we all have a superhero in our lives at some point. As an adult, I understood that Superman wasn't real, that a comic book character, he was just a comic book character. But as a young man, I wouldn't have believed it for one second. I wouldn't have believed it. Um, my imagination would run wild coming up with my own stories of how I could, I was Superman with a bath towel tied around my neck, around my neck. Anybody ever do that Have, and run and it would like fly behind you? Or maybe I was the only kid with my bath towel wrapped around my eyes uh, and or also a dish towel around my eyes, excuse me, uh, to make me look like it was a mask. Um, I could jump anything. I could pick up anything. I was 
Awesome. I was an awesome dude, right? You guys done? You got like a 30, you got like five seconds, okay? You ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, you can stop, you can stop. Let me have a mic, because we gotta get this, okay? Wow, that's really cool. It's really funny, but really cool. Since Leo's complete, we'll let him tell us about a superhero. Oh, wow, there's a lot of people. I mean, okay. Superhero, All what's right. your superhero? My superhero is the Red Justice. The Red Justice? What's your Red Justice's power? His power is of enable, he can hear everything, and he can predict your move. Ooh, oh, that's cool. What's, his we what's her weakness? Her weakness? She's very clumsy. Clumsy, oh, okay. Okay, that's good, that's good. Thank you, somebody take a picture of that. That's really cool, anybody have their phone? Here you go, Mitchell. Superhero name? My superhero's name is Captain Dipstick. Awesome. He's awesome. Uh, his superpower is he annoys his villains into submission. Oh. And What's his weakness? And then his weakness is he gets distracted by uh, food easily. Oh, wow. Is that true about him? True about him. All right, him. Fernando. All right. My superhero is Captain America, and his, <laughs> his strength is he yeah, a superhuman, and his weakness is... He's just like any other human. He's what? Just like any other human. He's human. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You guys can clean up. Give him a round of applause. Thank you very, very much. That's really funny. We did that at camp. I thought it was a really cool illustration. Even in scripture, there was a superhero, so to speak. Anybody remember Samson? In Judges 14, he tears a lion into pieces with his bare hands and kills it. In Judges 15, he, is, he finds a, the jawbone of a donkey and he reaches out with his hand and he takes it and he kills 1,000 men with it. So he was kind of super, super strong, superhero, so to speak. There's only one thing, though, I can think of when I look at all these superheroes. They all have a weakness. Even though they have their strengths, they also have a weakness. What was one? Gets distracted by food, uh, you know, things like that. Um, when you look at Superman had a weakness, his was kryptonite. If you remember the old comic books or watch the cartoon, he, had, he was kryptonite. Aquaman's weakness, he couldn't breathe out of water for only one hour. I did not know that. Uh, Batman was immortal. That means he wore a suit, and if his suit was penetrated, he would be injured. Uh, of course, if you look at uh, the Green Lantern, uh, he would, uh, he, his power or his weakness was he was, was yellow wood. I did not know that. I read that. I was like, yellow wood would, would tear him down or knock him down. Samson's weakness was his head being shaved. And that is in scripture in Judges 17, 17. And you guys, most of you know the story. When he tells his wife, Delilah, no razor has ever come up on my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If, my, if I am shaven, then my strength will leave me and I shall become weak as like any other man. As like any other man, even a real life superhero has a weakness, even a real life superhero. Uh, so just like a superhero, uh, Jesus is our ultimate superhero. In his birth, he was born of a virgin. Uh, in Luke 1, if you read that, he was also tempted and he never failed. He was tempted, but never failed. Wouldn't that be awesome to be able to do that? Also, he performs many, many miracles uh, where he turned water into wine, the great load of all of fish. Uh, he raised a widow's son from the dead, uh, cured a woman with the issue of blood. He was then tortured. He was killed. He died on the cross. And three days, of course, we know that he rose back from the dead. Now, I don't know about you, but that's super hero power, if you ask me. Amen. Uh, Jesus is our ultimate. Even in all of the uh, 33 plus uh, miracles listed in the Bible, and a lot of them were not listed, his unselfish decision to come to earth and to become a man, enduring humanity, to be brutally beaten, tortured, spit on, and ultimately killed, you can see one thing that shines through, one of his powers that shines through, and that is love. If you look up the ver a definition of love, and we all pretty much know what it is, but I looked it up anyway just for, for my, own, uh, uh, you know, my own knowledge. And of course, I think I know what it is. It's a strong affection for another arising out of a kinship or a personal tie. 
That's what the dictionary definition of it is. The Greek word of love, of course, we've heard many, many times is agape. And there are three other words I won't pronounce, but uh, it's the highest form of love. It's a brotherly love. It's also the love of God or Christ for humankind. It's the highest form of love. Now, let's, when we look at all the, th the things and the powers that Jesus possessed, it was his love that endured and sustained him. Now, you think about that for a second. You're like, okay. And, and let, me, let me talk about some of the evidences of that or talk about how I pulled this out of Scripture. He had a forgiving love. Jesus forgave. As Billy was talking about early, it's amazing how he was exactly talking about the first point that I had, forgiveness us having forgiveness for others, but Jesus had forgiveness. In Luke 23, 34, it said, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They didn't even know, you know, he is hanging there. Jesus showed his power of forgiveness even in his weakest moment. Can you imagine being hanging on a cross and you're dying and your, your life is gonna be over? And even in his weakest moment, he loved us enough to hang there on that despicable tree to endure the pains and the torment of the sins of humanity. Now that takes some serious love. I don't know about you, but that's some powerful, strong love giving, if you ask me. I don't know that I could do that. I mean, I know, you know, we, we sit around and we say, oh, I, I could, you know, one time I heard a comedian talking about this and he's like, yeah, you know, if, on the movies, it's, if, a, if someone gets shot, they say, go on without me, it'll be okay. He said, but in reality, what would you really do in that moment? Would you really be that, you know, there are a lot of brave men and women who have, you know, endured that before in their life. But my superhero wasn't vulnerable to the weakness of hate. He was not vulnerable to hate. He was not, he did not give in to dislike. He did not give in. Think about that. Jesus was hanging there and he could have said, God, don't forgive him. Come get me right now. And 10,000 angels would have came and he would have been gone. Think about that. I mean, in your, I mean he, was, he was, his love for us was at work. It was, he was hanging there and the whole time, those three nails that were holding him up there, the love was holding him up there, even in his pain. When Paul wrote his letter in Ephesians in verse 16 through 19, uh, it says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through the spirit in the inner man that is in here that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love, being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth. How do you do that? And the height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Um, do you guys know why toy makers um, watch the divorce rate? I read this statistic, thought it was interesting. Do you know why toy makers watch the divorce rate? It's when it rises, toy sales go up. According to the an an analogy, four parents and eight grandparents would tend to comp compensate or comprehend or, or compete for the children's affection uh, or to make them feel better so they buy toys for them. That was a statistic I thought was, Jesus did not give up heaven just to compete for your love. He did it because of his love for you already. See, he didn't, he didn't just do it and say, I, I just want, I want their love. He did it because he loved you already. Amen. And if you're here this morning and you say, uh, you know, in, in John 4, 1 John 4, 19, I always love this scripture. It said, we love him because he first loved us. It is biblical. He loved you first. He, God created you and in Jesus, the love Jesus had for humanity, for you as his creation, he came down and he bore all the sins of the world. Love is not something that you can purchase or something you can find on a shelf at the supermarket. Love is an action shown to what is considered valuable to you. Amen? If you have value in it, I can say, hey, Dylan, what's your favorite thing you love? I can see him now like going, well, maybe it's Michaela. Maybe it's my iPad. Maybe it's my, my phone, whatever. I mean, and you know what? You're probably going to see him spending time with that item or that person, correct? If you love someone, you're going to do what? What's your first goal? Is to talk to them, is to call them. Last night I came to the church and of course I know Victoria and uh, Josh have been dating a while and uh, you know, I knew they were here. You know, they come, came in. I was here working on some stuff because they love each other. 
And they like to spend time with one another. Can you imagine if he was like, I don't want to spend time with Victoria? Or she said, you know, there wouldn't be, there would be some worrying there, right? You love something, you want to be around them or be with the, the object that you love so much. Jesus put us first. His existence reflect, reflects who we are to him. It reflects who we are to him. His life was a fulfillment of his love towards God's creation. By living, dying, and by the resurrection power, resurrecting power, connecting us back to God would change the way we could not receive this free gift of salvation. Without it, we couldn't have received it. If Jesus would not have had the love for you, if he would not have came to earth to die and you would go through the whole process, you would not have an opportunity to go to God and say, Lord, forgive me. We would not have that opportunity. We would still be stuck in the way it used to be done. We would, he rewrote the chapter. He rewrote the book, so to speak. He fulfilled the prophecy. He fulfilled it. He forgave because he knew in that scripture where he says, forgive them for they do not know not what they do because they knew, he knew they didn't know. They didn't fully understand or comprehend the full impact of what was happening. His death was needed to repay the debt of our sin of the human race. He forgave them. He spoke to power and love for all of us because his love is everlasting. He has a forgiving love and he also has an everlasting love. Now, how many of you know what everlasting means? Forever and ever and ever and ever. It's like the ring, you know, when you get married, they say the ring is everlasting and it goes on forever. Don't believe the lie that God doesn't love you. Now, I don't know who here is here this morning that needs to hear this sermon, but I know that there's someone here that you need to know that the lies that the devil are spewing at you are, are, are wrong. If God didn't love you, he wouldn't have drawn you here this morning. If God didn't love you, he would not have put breath into your lungs. If God would not love you, he would not have even created you. He would have created someone else. He loves you because he made you in his image. And, and you know, the devil tries to come against us. A few weeks ago, we were having a church service here and I could just sense that someone just had this heavy burden, felt like that they were not unique or not, they were not worthy to be here or felt like that, you know, they just didn't feel, they just felt ucky inside. You know, everybody ever feel ucky inside or yucky or whatever you want to call it? Sometimes, but God's love is everlasting. When God gave Jesus the task of coming to earth and living as a man and bearing all the sins of the world, God was giving up his only son. His only one thing he had that was, well, he has many things that are perfect, but Jesus was the ultimate perfected sacrifice. Can you imagine, and I had an illustration and I, I, I'll share it just because I like the illustration. And I heard this several years ago, I think Pastor Jeff told it, and I hope I get it exactly right, but maybe I'll be a, a little bit off. It said that there was a seven-year-old little boy who um, his parents told him that his sister had, a, uh, had to have a kidney transplant. Um, and um, he, was the, he was there and, and they told him the story of, of, you know, having to have this transplant. And, and they said, you know, you have a few weeks and she'll probably not make it, but we want to make sure that uh, we give you a heads up. You have to go find a, a match or a donor. So they started checking everyone in the family. And uh, of course... No one was a match until they came to this little seven-year-old boy. They tested him, and he was a perfect match. So they went to him, and the parents went to him and said, you know, Jimmy, uh, how do you feel about this transplant, you know, you know being able to, to do it? And they, they told him about what it, would, what it would take. And he said, yeah, sure, I'll do it for my sister. I'll do anything for her. And so the day came, and they were going to the hospital, and they, they're going to the room, and he's there getting ready, getting prepared. And he looks up at his mom, and he says, Mom, what's heaven going to be like? And his mom said, well, what do you mean? What's heaven gonna be like? She was kind of horrified. Here he was, you know, getting ready to go through this surgery. And he said, well, you know, what's heaven gonna be like? She said, well, it's gonna be a great place, but someday we'll, we'll get to go there. He's like, yeah, but what about me? I'm gonna see it soon. She's like, Jimmy, what are you talking about? He said, well, I'm giving up my life so my sister can live. She said, you mean to tell me this whole time? you thought that you were going to die? You know, you thought you were gonna die from, from the surgery? He said, yeah, I thought that was part of it. And she said, no, Jimmy, you're not going to die. And she was heartbroken because she said, I can't believe that my son, now, you know, he was willing to give up his own life 
Now think about God when he gave up his son Jesus. God couldn't even watch. He couldn't even watch. He turned his back. It says he turned his back. Can you imagine if that was one of us watching that? I, I, it would be the hardest thing ever to ever have to do that. It would be the hardest thing ever to give up my own son, to be able to, you know, to, to give someone else freedom. In Romans 8, 31 through 39, it says, what, shall, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for all, us all, how shall he not with him also freely give all, us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress, persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? It is as it is written, for your sake, sake, we are all killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor depths, nor any other created thing shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Did you hear that? Nothing will separate us from the love of God. Nothing will separate us. Nothing. Everlasting and never ending nothing. So I would, I would challenge you this morning, put that in your thought Put that in your memory. And when the devil comes against you, say, devil, nothing will separate me from the love of God. Nothing will separate us because he will come against us. How many of you know, he wants you to believe that God is this God sitting up there. He's, you know, gets his throne and he's just kind of hanging out. And he's like, I don't feel like giving love away today. I'm God. I'll just do whatever I want. See, that's not the God that I serve. The Bible contradicts all of that. When the devil tells you that, you know, you're not good enough or God's only giving you love because you're giving something to him. Maybe you're, you know, working in the church. Maybe there's something you're like, well, I gave God, you know, I gave God more money in the offering. Here's what the Bible says in Romans 5, 8. It says, but God demonstrated his own love towards us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While you were still a sinner, even when you were in the sin, even when you weren't even close to God, he died, Jesus died for you. So doesn't that contradict what the devil tries to get us to believe? Even when we don't deserve it, God loves us. I don't care what you've done in your past. I don't care where you've been. I don't care how far from God you feel like you've ran. Nothing will ever separate his love for you. He will always be watching. Come on, I'm here for you. I want you to come back. Please, I'm, I'm, I'm just, come on, come back to me. God will always be looking towards you. It just takes a simple, it just takes you to simply go, I love you, God. Or simply turning around and walking towards him. Because how many of you know that God is going to stand there and he is going to wait? He's patient. He's a patient God. If he was not a patient God, where would we all be? We would be gone. We would be, he would crave. He was like, man, I don't have time for them. But his love is everlasting. He does not, there's no boundary to it. His love just extends. He, he's like, I he can't even get to the end of it. There's enough to go around. Amen. There's enough for everyone to go around. Ephesians, as we read, rehearse back in 3, 19 through 20, it says, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. We need to understand that it's the love of Christ or the knowledge of it that fills us with the fullness of God. See, when we start to understand how much God loves us and how much the love of Christ flows in us and how much he loves us, we start gaining power. We're like devil. <laughs> you have no authority here because I'm standing on the word of God. I'm standing on truth. And the truth is you have to get away from me because I know my Jesus loves me. Take that in your, and get rid of a devil. You got to flee from here. Amen. How many of you know that the devil flees when, when God is present? Amen. The, the, the sin and the devil cannot be in the presence of the Lord because he's like, 
get out of my face, and they have to flee, right? Jesus, he would just commands them to leave. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. He has given us a power, a spirit of, uh, not a spirit of fear to be afraid, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Now, God, God's, my, how many superheroes do you know that shares their power with others? How many do you know that do that? Jesus is extending that love, that power. Here, I'm giving it all to you. I'm pouring out my love upon all of you. Now, last Sunday night when we were here having, having our service, and you know, there's been many times in our church services and, and other opportunities that God was so present and so here, and he was pouring his love and his, out on people. I mean, just loving on me. Just love me, God. Just being in his presence, just, you just want to kneel. It says every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, amen. But when we're in his presence, just knowing that he's close, just knowing that he's close and his love is just drawing us in. Power of love and sound minds. God's love is infinite. It never ends. It has no boundary. It's not limited. It can't be contained and it draws to him and it's contagious. It's contagious. Amen. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you another illustration. I thought this was kind of cute, but there was a, uh, I don't remember if he was a pastor. I believe he was a pastor. And this lady came in for counseling and she said, pastor, I'm mad at my husband. We've been married for several ye- many, many years. I want a divorce. He drives me nuts. I can't stand him, but I want to make him hurt. I want to make him have a, I want this divorce to end ugly. I want it to be bad because I want him to, I want it to hurt him bad. So the pastor said, okay, let me think for a second. He said, I have a great idea. He said, why don't you go home for three months and just love your husband? Tell him he is so great. Just show him love, make him dinner. Uh, You know, tell him how much, how special he is. Buy him gifts. Just love on him like never before. Just pour out your love upon him. And he said, at the last moment, in the last three months, the last day, say, by the way, I'm leaving you. He said, that'll really get him. So the lady, she, she does what she said. She goes home and she starts, you know, loving on the man. And three months go by and the pastor didn't hear anything from the woman. Another month goes by. So he said, hmm, I never heard from that lady. I'm going to call her up. So he calls her up on the phone and says, uh, by the way, uh, how are things going? Do you still want that divorce? She said, absolutely not. No way. This is the greatest marriage ever. I love him more than I've ever loved him before. See, it's in her heart. When the love of Jesus is flowing, when we start showing love to others, it's contagious. It rubs off on yourself, amen? I was talking about in Sunday school this morning, we were talking about Jerry, you know, Jerry Painter. We were saying, you know how Jerry always comes up? I said, how many of you here have ever gotten a hug from Jerry? They were all raising her hand, you know, and let's see, people raising their hand. How many of you love it when Jerry walks in the door and he's all joyful? Hey, how you doing, brother? I love you. You know, Jerry's, but I love that about him. But is it not, Jerry? It's contagious, brother. It is contagious. How many of you love it, right? It's, it's awesome. What if we were that way? See, Jesus is that way with us. He extends the love to us. All we have to do is go, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And when Billy was talking earlier, this contagious love, it kind of ties into the ending of my sermon here. In 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 13, it says, though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels, but have not love, I became a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Does not Behave rudely, does not seek its own. It's, it's not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but what that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will become done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. 
For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now I abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. When we know him on a personal level, a transformation takes place and we are perfected in the love of God. Can you imagine, you know, just thinking of this lady that uh, Billy was reading about in that letter. I'm glad you read that, by the way. Just the, the love, even though she felt wronged. How many of you have ever felt wrong before? How many of you know that everybody's got somebody? Everybody here could shake their head or raise their hand and say, there's somebody in my life that has wronged me and they drive me up the wall. They, I, I'm so mad at them right now and, and, and I'm just gonna be bitter. It will tear you down. It will tee you up inside. The other day, one of my coworkers I used to work with called me and there's a, a gentleman that used to work in that company and he left very bitter. And he was talking about how he was really upset at, at, at this other person and how he just, and on and on and on and on and on. He just kept talking. And I said, and I told my friend, Mike, I said, you know, that guy that has all that bitterness, it will kill him inside. It will, it will smash him inside because the, the hate and the dislike and the discord just keeps, continues to grow. It's like a feeding on itself. But when you have the love of Jesus, when you have the love that spills out, it is contagious. If, I mean, you just think about that. Think of the person, no matter what they've done, and it can be some pretty bad things, right? It can be some pretty rotten things people have done to us. And maybe you're that person that's done the rotten thing. Amen? Sometimes we as Christians, one thing that really troubled me the other day, the other day I, was, I had heard about a teacher having an issue at school, uh, and, and I won't go into any details. It's not the time or place, but the first thing I saw, I had Facebook on my iPad, and it, and it had Christians posting it, like tagging it, sharing it. I'm like, my brother's down, now you're gonna kick him? Is that extending love, church? Are we loving on a man who made a mistake? Are we gonna be that? Is that who we are as the church? Come on, we, we've got to know that even though people make mistakes, and, and you know what? As long as they're, they're sorrowful for them, we, we got to make it right. We got to make it right. I have an aunt, um, and I'll tell you this personal story. My aunt, was a, she was pretty mean. She was pretty mean. When I was a kid, she was pretty rude to me. My wife will tell you, she was mean. I mean, anytime my daughter starts carrying on, I say, hey, little, you know what? But that's what I call her is my, my aunt because that was her nickname, and, you know, for being mean. But, but, you know, a few years ago when I had been here at the church for a while, it's probably been four or five years ago, uh, she came to Harrisonburg and met me at Greenberries and we had coffee and she said, I just want you to know. And I mean, I had prayed for her before she showed up. She texted me and left me a message and we connected and, and I said, you know, I don't, I don't have any ill feelings and I really didn't. I said, I, I, I'm sorry that things happened the way they did in our families and they didn't really get along. But I want you to know that I appreciate and love you. And she said, I want you to know that I have no ill feelings. What a heavy burden to take off your back. Wouldn't that be such a heavy burden? Now, if you're here today and you know that's something that you're dealing with, you know, the burden can be lifted with the simple, God, help me. Give me that strength to call that person on the phone. Let me send them a card. How many have that person, right? How many of us have that person? We could, we could call them up and say, I want you to know that I'm sorry. I want you to know that even if I didn't do anything wrong, because one thing about, you know, we, we as people, we hate to say we're sorry when we didn't do anything wrong, right? We always think that we're perfect. We always think sometimes maybe we didn't. And in some cases we don't, we don't do anything wrong. But let me read this one more scripture for you. It's Colossians 3, 12 through 15. It says, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, Put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. But of all these things, put on love, which is a bond, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. It is natural to love them that love you, See, that's natural, but it's super natural to love them that hate you. It is supernatural. If you can love someone that doesn't love you, uh, I had a guy, and I probably have told you this story. I had a gentleman call me up 
a few months ago. And it's been more than a few months. It's probably a year ago, maybe. And this brother was giving it to Trevor. He was letting Trevor have it for both barrels, shotgun, pistol, you name it. He was giving it to me. Something that happened eight to nine years ago. True story. Happened eight, nine years ago. I didn't even remember it. Didn't even remember it happened. And then I started thinking, you know, I do kind of vaguely remember it. I was actually driving the church bus heading to Fine Arts when it happened. And I'm like, wait a second, I don't remember that. I don't remember it going quite like this, this gentleman had mentioned. And he was going on and on and on. So I said, and he went on for probably 45 minutes. I let him talk for about 45 minutes. I waited, I called him back the next day. I said, you know, I'm gonna pray about it and think about it a little bit. I called him back and I said, let me, t- let me, I could have called him back. How many of you know I could have called him back and I could have had my shotgun ready, right? Anybody ever done that? How, how good do you feel afterwards? You feel horrible. You still feel bad, right? You might feel good in yourself, but you really don't. But I called him up and I said, let me tell you something. I want you to know that I'm sorry if I ever did anything to hurt you. I want you to know that I'm truly sorry. Please forgive me. He wouldn't accept it, but that's okay. I, and I said, I want you to know that I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to be thinking about you. I want you to know that I want to see you now so successful that God just blesses you in a mighty and rich way. Now, which way can we go? Right? What if Jesus would have been hanging on that cross and would have said, I'm going to be, I'm going to get my shotgun out and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to give it to them what they deserve. Can you imagine where we would be? So I just can, just this morning, and another little illustration, and then I'll close, and Sharon, you can come if you would. It was, uh, I just thought this was a really sweet, sweet story. It was about a man, an American man, who was walking down the streets of China, in a China city, and was really interested watching all these little kids who were running around playing a game of kickball or soccer, and on, some of them on their backs were carrying a little baby on their backs. And as they were playing, this little baby's like on their back and they're playing ball. And you can imagine what that would be like. And and at the same time they were carrying this baby, they were playing the game, just like everyone else. He was kind of had compassion. He's like, wow, man, I really feel bad about this. And he he pulled one of the little boys aside. He said, man, it's too bad. You know, uh, sympathetically, he said to the little, one of the little guys, he said that you have to carry such a heavy burden around with you. Little boy looked at him and said, he's no burden. He's my little brother. Can you imagine if we extended love to our fellow Christians or fellow friends or people that don't even love us? They're our brother. They're our sister in the Lord. There are people in your life that I I feel that you need to extend love to. There are going to be many people we encounter. If you want to see people come to see you, you you want to have people walk through the church Uh, the doors of a church, any church, not just this church, any church, you extend love to them and show them love and and kindness and and what what the church is designed to do. Amen? There's not going to be a pew empty. I mean, a, a seat empty. There won't be enough room in here to hold everyone that's coming in. So as we close, I want you to just slowly, just let's bow our heads and let's just keep an attitude of worship. Because I believe... I don't believe it was just by chance that Billy Grimsey brought that story to church this morning. I think it was God ordaining that. When you think about the forgiving love of Jesus, if you're here this morning and you, in your spirit, you go, I don't feel worthy. I feel far away from God. I feel like God doesn't love me because of the things I've done. Let me tell you this, that is a lie. That is a lie and there's no truth in that. And if you would say to yourself, you know, brother, uh, I'm struggling right now. I'm going through a, a really tough time. And I just want to, God to just reach into my heart this morning. If that's you, I want you to, even right now, just to get up out of your seat. I want you to come up and kneel down at these altars. Because I believe there's people here this morning that need to know that God loves you. Don't be embarrassed. There's many of you here this morning that that I just feel that you feel that maybe you haven't been forgiven 
Maybe you got something that's holding you back. Maybe you need to know Jesus. There's only one way to know who he is and to receive him into your heart. That's get up, walk down to this altar and say, Lord, forgive me of all of my sins and write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I would just encourage you this morning, if that is you, because God's love is forgiving love. Also knowing that his love is everlasting means it never ends. No matter where you've been in life, no matter where, how far away, no matter what's going on, even in your current situation, Jesus loves you. And I just, even in my own self this morning, sometimes it's hard for me to understand that kind of love. Also, this contagious love we were talking about. Maybe you're here and you say, you know what? I've got a situation and I need to bring it to the Lord. Now, I know that's a tough walk. Nobody ever wants to admit something like that. No one ever wants to say, well, I've got a little bit of disgruntledness going on and I need God's help. I, I would challenge you to get up out of your seat and walk down and give it to God on this altar right now. Now, if you're a little bit nervous, and, and, and I, I know because I've been there, I would just encourage you just to get up and say, Lord, I need your help this morning. Father, this morning, God, is those that are coming, Lord. I, Father, I just pray right now, Lord, that you would minister. Holy Spirit, have your way, God, in this service, Lord. If there's someone here, God, that needs to know who you are, Lord, before they walk out of here, that they would come down to this altar, Lord, and they would ask for forgiveness of all of their sins, Lord. If there's someone here that feels like they're so far away from you, Lord, that, God, that there's no way they could ever come back, God, I pray right now that they would get up out of their seat, Lord. Lord, and just come down and kneel before you, God. Lord, I just pray, God, that if there's anyone in this service that would have a bitterness, Lord, or maybe have a disgruntledness against a brother or a sister, Lord, or a, a relative, Lord, a friend, God, that they would, they would get up, even, Lord, in our, in our most embarrassing moments, Lord, that they would get up and come down and say, Lord, I need your help because, Jesus, when you were hanging on that cross, you were, were in your weakest moment. You were, you were beat up, Lord. You were bruised and you were dying, and you still, because of the love that you showed to us, Lord, you hung there. Holy Spirit, right now, reach into that heart. Jesus, I pray, God, right now, Lord, that if there's someone here, Lord, that needs to know that you love them, Lord, even right now. Lord, I just believe, God, in my spirit this morning that there are more. I would ask you, church, don't, don't let this get away from you. Don't let the enemy steal what God has put before you. Don't let him rob you of a, of a blessing this morning. I would ask you even right now just to get up because God is the healer, amen? I would ask some brothers and sisters, even as those are coming, our prayer warriors, our intercessors, and our, prayer, our praying team, would you come up and pray with some of these this morning? I believe God is up to something in some lives this morning and we don't wanna miss the opportunity of seeing these lives changed because I believe that there are many more. I believe there's many more. I believe that, that sometimes we let, we let things hold us back. I just encourage you this morning, just get up and say, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need your love. I need to feel your love, Lord. I need to know that you are here with me. Now, it's not an emotion. You have to come in faith knowing that when you step out of that chair, God is right there beside of you. Lord, I pray, God, over the ones that are here at this altar, Father. Lord, even right now, God, I pray for my brothers. Lord, as we close out our service, Lord, Father, I would pray for Teddy, Lord. Father, I just pray that, God, you would reach down, Lord, even right now, Lord. And this young man, Lord, Father, which you have blessed, Lord, with so much giftings, Lord. Father, I pray right now that whatever it is, God, that he is, is going through, Lord, that you would just extend your hand to him, Lord, Father, right now. Let the love of Jesus just extend. Lord, you love this young man. You created him, Lord, in your image. Lord, you gave him... Uh, Lord, the opportunity, God, to go out and preach the word and to minister the word, God, right now, I just pray over his life. Lord, just touch him, God, in a mighty and special way, Lord, here this morning. 
Lord, I pray against any thoughts that would come against him, Lord, that would cause him to, to think that you don't love him, God. Father, right now, I know that that's the work of the enemy, God, and there's no truth in that, Lord. Father, I pray for him, Lord. Father, I pray for his father, Lord, Bahani, Lord. I pray that you just reach out into his life, Lord, even right now. Extend your hand. God, whatever it is that he is, that's come against him, Lord, I pray that you just give him a new walk, Lord, and knowing and, and give him an assurance, Father, knowing that your love is everlasting. It's like a, a consuming fire, Lord, that burns in his spirit, Lord. Father, we know that you are, are, even as my brother preached last Sunday, Lord, that a consuming fire that just wells up inside of us, Lord. And I pray right now, Lord, that the Holy Spirit just give him direction, Lord, and give him a peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord, that he knows, that he knows that you are there with him, Lord. Father, be with him, Lord. Lord, I pray for my brothers, Lord. I pray for my sisters, Lord. I pray for my brothers, Lord. Father, we thank you, God. Love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Lord, I thank you, Lord. I pray for my brother, Lord. Father, right now, I pray over my brother, Lord. Father, that you would just come even right now, Lord. And Father, no matter what it is, Lord, I would pray that, God, you would come, Lord, right now and just minister to him. Let him know, Lord, that you love him, Lord. You love him, Lord. And Father, if there's something there that's causing discord, Lord, that you would come against it, Lord. Father, that you would you just reach down into his soul, Lord, and just minister to him, Lord. Father, where you are a loving God, you're standing right there with arms open wide, just waiting on us, Lord, to just extend our hands. The devil has to flee because the name of Jesus is above all names, Lord. There's nothing that will come against him, Lord, because you have set him free, Lord, this morning. Let the chains that would hold him back, Lord, right now, be set free, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let it be done. Let my brother just know, God, without a shadow of a doubt, Lord, that you are with him. Let the faith, his faith grow in you, Lord. And we just encourage him, Lord, this morning. Thank you, Lord, for my brother, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray for my sister, Lord. Father, I pray that you would just reach, God, Lord, into her soul, Lord, right now. Father, anything that would come against her, Lord, Father, let the power of the Holy Spirit just ignite her, Lord. Let joy come, Lord, in the morning. Let joy come. Let the freedom and the liberty that you have given to us, Lord, because you hung there on that cross. And, Lord, you bore all the sins, Lord, of the world and through love, Lord. You're, a, you're my superhero, God. You are the one who, you're my, my God and my Lord and my Savior, God. We love you, Jesus. Now, Lord, I just pray, God, that you would go with her, Lord. Walk with her, Lord. Stand beside of her, Lord, Father. When she starts to fail, Lord, that the scripture just ministers to her, Lord, that nothing shall separate her from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And Father, right now, we claim victory, Lord. What is coming against her, Lord, that we claim victory, Lord, that the chains will fall, Lord. And right now, we claim victory, Lord. It's in your name we pray. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. If you're here this morning, and even as we close, you could come up and you'd say, you know, Pastor, I wouldn't come out of fear. Or I wouldn't come because I was, I was afraid someone might say, you mean they've got a problem? I got news for you, church. I got problems. I got news for you, church. We all got something. We all got a situation that, that stands in our way. Even the smallest things, we should give them to God. Amen? I want you to remember even the service tonight. Uh, Brother Lake is going to be ministering in the back there. And he's going to be ministering. I just encourage you to come out and be a part of that. We also will have uh, Girls Club is tonight. Sister Angie and Andrea, who had that up. Also, our youth group meets tonight at 630 I just come expecting what God is going to do. Amen. I want another outpouring of the Holy Spirit like we experienced last Sunday night. And the reason these ladies are raising their hand is because God dumped out in a mighty way. But you only tell you what I think it takes. We have to be the ones that open up. We have to be the ones that surrender and say, I'm going to come forward. I'm going to stand before God. And God, I'm going to give it all to you. And let me tell you, I was the skeptical guy. Last Sunday morning when that pastor came on that stage, I was the skeptical guy. 
I'm telling stories on myself, okay? How many of you know I'm the person who always tests? I'm always thinking, okay, let me see. I'm gonna analyze this till I'm blue in the face. But I'm telling you, when my brother came up and was praying for me on Sunday night, now it was not him who did anything. It was the mark of the Holy Spirit and God's power. And when he came up to me and said, brother, I wanna pray for you, it was like, bang, lightning came through my body. Now I'm not saying that I am, I'm Superman now, I can't run through that wall. But I'll tell you what happened this week. Two things happened. One, I prayed with a brother this week and I would have never done that in a million years before because out of fear. I was walking through Costco on Tuesday and there was this little lady serving food from the little trays. You know, say, hey, welcome to Costco. You can have me. But she was doing that and she looked really sad. She looked really sad and really, she almost looked like something was wrong. And God spoke and said, say something to that lady. I, I didn't want what she was serving. I didn't, I don't do those things. I don't eat them. I walked up and I said, is this stuff good? She said, oh yeah, my, well, yeah, it is. She said, there's a whole bunch right back there. I said, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Just kindness. And all of a sudden, she got a smile on her face. That's the power that God works through us. Amen. Let's just bow our heads and we'll say a closing prayer. Again, if you want to come up and, and speak with me afterwards, that would be great. I'll try to shake your hands as best I can. Lord, we just thank you, God, for another day which you have given us. Father, I just pray, God, Father, this morning that everyone that is here, God, that, Lord, that when they leave here, they know that nothing shall separate them from your love. Lord, no heights, nor depths, nor widths. We, we can't even measure your love, Lord, because it's so big. God, I pray, Lord, this morning that the ones that are out there, Lord, uh, Sister Diane, who's there in Broadway, Lord, with her mom. Lord, I pray an extension to her, Lord, and just reach out to her, God, with love. And Lord, I pray for Pastor Jeff as he is traveling with Bonnie, Lord, that you give them traveling protection, Lord. Father, for, for Jim Ailes, Lord, who is, is down in his, in his bed, Lord, I just pray, God, right now that you just extend your hand of love to that young man, Lord, Father. For his wife that's here, God, I pray over her, Lord. Over Isabel, God, that you would give her strength, Lord. Over Bob and Maisie, Lord, the father, the, the ones that are there at, at, at the nursing home, Lord, that, and Bob's been ill, Lord. I pray that you give him strength into his arms and his legs, that he can get up and, and move around, Lord. I pray for the ones that have been going and, and staying overnight, Lord, over Judy and Benny, Lord. And Father, I pray for the many souls that are here, God, that have a need in body, Lord. I pray that right now that you just reach out your hand from heaven, God. Lord, just because we're not kneeling at this altar, Lord, doesn't mean that you're not at work. It doesn't mean that you cannot do a miracle even as we close in prayer, Lord. Father, you're still God. Even as we're driving home, God, doesn't mean that you're limited to manly things, God, or fleshly things, God. You are God. And Lord, right now, by faith, we claim that if there's someone here, Lord, that needs a touch that you extend right now, Lord, as we even extend our hands to heaven, Lord, Father, be with us tonight as we come back, Lord, and uh, we celebrate your goodness with our services. Uh, Lord, be with the ones that are going to be ministering, Lord, with Lake and with Angie and with, uh, with Sister Andrea, Lord, and Father, myself, as we uh, bring forth word to the kids. Lord, just be with us, Lord. I pray all of these things, Lord, and we give you thanks for what you're doing here today. It's in Jesus' master's name. And with all of God's children said, amen. God bless you. Just give me a moment to make it back to the door.